and uh, Jane has never been a spinster in her life. So we got, I, uh, we got married when I was in my fourth year in the university and when she was, had just finished form four. So, mimi ndio nilifunza ye college na hiyo ingine, natuka songa. Right? So, so let's have this interesting conversation that a senior pastor gave to me for, for me just to coordinate. It's a conversation. And this is woman, comma, the anchor of the family, comma, a man's perspective. Anyway, I think the last part of it is just being dramatic because, because it's me facilitating, then it has to be a man's perspective. So I was just, uh, by the way, you see at in the mapatiwa ile from the kathamos here, Pastor Boyd, kumbe anointing in atokaka koto to maji. So, nika patiwa ndio nishike yo pako, nika, nika dawa. So basically, I was, we were just discussing in the boardroom uh, with, the, with the speaker there that it's interesting for you ladies because uh, when I was told that I would be speaking to ladies, I knew that I was speaking to the meeting of the day. I really um, don't envy the, the speaker of the men because uh, of obvious reasons. But uh, ladies, you guys are very serious and that's why we are talking about anchor, anchors of the society of the family. Because I knew then I will be the one who, is, who will be speaking to 80% of the congregation today. So it is indeed a, a, a good opportunity. And what you are saying, even for you guys who are leaders, wherever you are, the best way to learn is to teach. The best way to learn is to teach. And basically what we are saying is, whatever you think you know, anything that you think you know, if you want to know how much you know it, just try teaching other people about it. Whatever you think you know, whatever it is, just get a group of people, and teach them. That Bible that you think you know, if you do not start in Jerusalem with your children, with your husband, with the people around you, with your house help like that, and then you take a verse, read it with an intention of teaching, then what you think you know, you don't know. And the moment you are studying something with an intention to teach, I was trying to look for a best way to explain it, but basically you you will understand it with both ears. You'll also understand it with the spiritual ears. And you really internalize it for you to be able to teach it. So for me, I take it as a great privilege. And I pray daring prayers to God. And I tell God, give me an, opportun an opportunity to teach. Because in real sense, when you get an, opportun an opportunity to teach anything, anyone, then that is, in real sense, an opportunity, an opportunity to learn. And that's why, let me give you a secret, being a child of a teacher, that's why teachers don't grow old. How many teachers do we have? You see, they don't grow old. If they tell you how long they've been teaching, they don't grow old, because if you are teaching grade four, you will be a student of grade four for the rest of your life. <laughs> because what, how will you give something that you don't have? You will teach, you will laugh, you will, you will that's the secret. That's why, it is, uh, that's why teachers are on high demand when uh, men are looking for spouses. You know? The ones that are, that are not on very high demand is nurses. Even me, when I was getting married, I was a nurse. Actually, Jane is a trained teacher. It was early childhood because I know I'll be taken care of like, uh, like the young ones. Sasa I was a nurse in Matatizo Kidogo, because you can imagine, she has been in uh, ICU or uh, emergency room, accident tattoo, watu wanane wame, wame kufa, and then unakuja unanza kusema, nikona kauchungu hapa. Anashanga, what's wrong with you, but? <laughs> Kunyo majimoto unaweke ndimu, takuwa sawa. Lakini mwalimu wa early childhood, ukimwambia ukula, ah, ebo nione baba. Hey. So, so, so that's, that's basically the secret. That's, that's the secret. So if you are not very old, it's an opportunity to change careers. And uh, you can be a teacher quickly. So let's get into it. Anchor, 
the woman as the anchor of the family. And I think one of the things that we say is that, especially when you're, when you're reading the Bible, please read with a, with a, have a dictionary near you, because we start with uh, looking at the meaning of the word anchor. A-N-C-H-O-R. Anchor. It's an anchor. So, very interestingly, I was just uh, researching about that, and an anchor, the most common definition of the word anchor is, I don't know how many of you guys have, uh, have been on a ship, merely, on the water. I'm a boat. Even a boat. Eh, boat, sasa naona watu wa meo, eh. Naona boat, watu wa uko nini? Budalangi. So what happens is that even a ship, it doesn't matter how big it is. You know, there are, there are ships that are like a small town, you know, the size of Ruai, very big, like the Titanic, for example, and then boats, Isozote. When it docks, when it stops at uh, the edge of the sea, river, whatever it is, eh, then, kama baisikeli vile uwa tunaweka hivi, alafu tunafungilia na kakitu hivi, for the ship, there is a key big thing, big metal. The bigger the boat, the bigger it is, which is uh, big like this, alafu ikona some sharp edges hivi, and then kichuma kiko hapa katikati. So it looks like a, a kind of a wide U with a chuma hapa katikati. And then with the hand, harness using a, a nyororo, a chain that is tied to the boat. And then it is sunk down up to the place where it touches the bed and then it secures the boat because now hapo kuna mawimbi na nini na nini. It actually secures it. So it is amazing because you see the big ships, for you guys who have seen them, the big ones that are, there is a ship that is 14 stories high, eh? but it is secured by an anchor. And because that anchor is on the ground na imeshika huko chini, na because hizo vitu ni sharp zimeuma hapo chini, then that ship does not move. And if you start thinking with me, because you see how, how it is, this uh, conversation is developing, what happens when the ship does not have an anchor? What does it do? It sways another adjective. What does it do? And then, eh, pardon? Pardon? It probably will not capsize. Most likely it will not capsize because it's a boat. But what it, what it will do, the right word there is that it will drift. And when it, when it drifts, because at that time it doesn't have a captain, then it will move away. So this one is what anchors it. It's an anchor. So you can see now if you infer this word to the topic of the day, is that now we are likening a woman to an anchor in the family. I don't know whether you are uh, starting to internalize how profound that statement is. Right? That without this anchor, then the family drifts. And how true this is. In my research, especially from, from uh, books that have been written about womanhood, the godly way, it has amazed me how true this is. And sometimes things happen in life and you take them for granted and you really don't think about it. Eh? And one of the things that I found out is that especially the people who really don't understand how much of an anchor they are to the family, unfortunately, men are culprits of this, but the biggest culprits are actually the women themselves. You guys just don't appreciate the role that God has given you in the family. And all, all the time I want you from, from now that you have had this conversation, I want you now to be thinking of that anchor. After this conversation now, I know you will be looking at it differently. It's always a, it's always a challenge to, 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 to give a talk after lunch. But Mungu uh, atatusaidia. Right? You know, from up here, you see a lot of things, eh? Okay? 
So, let's get into it. Let's do a little bit of Bible study. Genesis 2.18. You know, you know, every time Jesus was uh, being attacked by the Pharisees about marriage, he usually, he usually told them, let's go to the beginning. The beginning of something is very critical. The beginning of something. And especially the beginning of marriage. You know, we are in MCCG together with the Mom Alice and the several others. Uh, the beginning of marriage is very critical. The beginning of everything is very critical. So let's go to the beginning. Where did woman come from? Where and why? So here comes a verse that is very interesting. You know, I, I was asking a loaded question to our speaker because I basically believe that anyone who doubts that the enemy exists, because we have, when, we, when we are preaching to people, very many people really doubt, what was some guy exaggeration, this enemy, devil, nini, satan. If you doubt that the enemy exists, if you doubt, just commit to be reading and studying your Bible seriously. And what you read and study and internalize, you pray using it. Just commit. Just tell yourself, from Samoja, Bakasambili, I'll be reading and studying this Bible seriously. And then what I read, I will be praying so that it is either I am applying it or I'm confessing something. I'm, it is the word that I will be praying with the word. Then you will know that that guy exists. Because he will fight you on that commitment like you have never imagined. I don't know whether I have any witness. Yes. He will fight two things. Reading the word of God and praying with that word that you have read. Because God is always speaking, but he is speaking with your Bible open. And when he speaks, you will speak to him back. Because you will hear what he says when you are reading the Bible, studying it. And then after that, you will close your eyes and then you will have a conversation. And he will tell you what to confess, what to apply, what to change. All these things he will tell you. But God, but the devil really fights you when you have a conversation with your father. So let's have this scripture. And this is Genesis, Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. The Lord God said... It is not good for a man to be alone. I will make a helper that is suitable for him. That verse is a loaded verse. Now, let me just take you a little bit because we are in church and the context of everything, understanding who you are as a woman, me understanding myself as a man, and then based on that, understanding who we are as husband and wife. Now, I want you to, every time you're reading a Bible, let me give you a little bit of a context. Every time you're reading the Bible, please go inside that Bible and, and, you know, try as much as possible to place yourself and see the surrounding around that word that was written there. Now, this is the surrounding. This is the context. During, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, man had not fallen. There was no sin. Iyo matunda, iyo, iyo ovacado hapo katikati ya hikuwe imekuliwa. It was still intact. Yeah? So it was man. And visualize, man is in paradise, the garden of Eden. Man is in the, this cool evening, hapa saizi saa nane na nusu hivi. Who are they hanging around with? In the cool of the evening. I know you guys read. So what was man doing in the cool of the evening? What was he doing? He was hanging out with God. I don't know who you hung out with in the evening, in the afternoons. Eh? But man was hanging out with God. Hanging out in English in Ilaweka. They were, walikuwa wal, nakutana, wanaongea, anauliza, by the way, hii mnyama yiko na shingo mrefu liitaja, na nasema, hii ah, inaona hii kitu wacha tuite jirafu. Mungu anasema, I think hiyo ni jinapoa. Eh, what else, like that, they were. So, look, visualize yourself. That God 
has created everything and he, ha he looked at everything and he said it was? No. He said it was very good. Very good. Everything. And he had even rested. And in the evening, he's hanging around with his creation, the man. Right? And the man is in paradise. And then God looked at it. Thank you. And then God looked at him and said, it is not good. By the way, Adam, you know, you think that he's a Kenyan. There was no complaint. So it is actually God who looked at him and said, it is not good. After he said, it is very good. Everything, the creation was good. But after he looked at him, he said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make for him a helper that is suitable for him. Now I'm wondering, Yani, this guy, even our Pope, our Catholic, Bishop, or Sitam, they don't even have the privilege that Adam had, hanging around with God himself in the cool of the evening, in paradise, in Garden of Eden. But even with that, God still said that it was not good. That really amazes me. It doesn't matter how spiritual you think you are. Myself as a man. It doesn't matter. Triple PhD in theology. You know? Bishop of a big church. It doesn't matter what I am. What I am doing. What I am capable of doing. As long as I do not have that suitable helper that God created me, in the eyes of God, it is not good. And I'm just painting this picture slowly because my intention today at the end of this talk is that I want you to see yourself for who you really are according to God's divine design. That without you guys in our lives, because it is a man's perspective, it doesn't matter what I have, how educated I am, how rich I am, what, whatever I want to put myself in, as long as I don't embrace God's perspective, then in his eyes, it will not be good. Remember, we are talking about anchor. Visualize it. And today, it's a, it's, a, it's a conversation. I want to have this conversation. I want to provoke you a little bit, and then I want us to have a session of, uh, you know, question and answer. So then the issue here is this, that it is God who saw that it was not good, and he said it. And because God is sovereign, he's a sovereign God, you know, if I really feel pity for Akina, the leaders of this country, uh, you know, and, and the leaders of the countries who say that this country is a sovereign state, obviously they don't know the Bible the real sovereign one. You know, they say this country is a sovereign state and then within a very short time, we vote them out. You know? So at the end of the day, sovereignty in, is only an adjective that is only reserved for God. There is no human being who can say or anything on this earth that can say they are sovereign. Sovereignty is only for God because he does not consult anyone. He is not accountable to anyone. Whatever he says is the right thing, and it is done. So in his sovereignty, he said it is not good. In his sovereignty, he went back, after he rested, he went back to his laboratory. Now I'm thinking like a man. And he said, there is now, this is now the time for me now to bring the helper that I want for this man so that my purpose can be accomplished on this earth. And he went with his divine hands and he built the actual Hebrew word there is built. He built the woman from the side of the man. And that is when, according to him, he solved the issue where he said it was not good. So now he made it good. And how did he make it good? He actually created woman. So the answer to it is not good for man to be alone 
is actually woman. And you were created for a very serious purpose because it is after that that he says, and that is why a man should leave his father and mother and cleave and be one because I think that one, even when you read Ephesians chapter 5, where he says one and he says, I'm actually not talking about marriage, but I'm talking about my relationship with the church. I think when there is oneness between a man and a woman in holy matrimony, I think we are closest to what God says he created us in his image. That's the closest that you can get. Because after that now we start partaking of a role that was only his, which is procreation. It's, I don't want to venture into that one. It's a, it's a discussion for another day. So the question today is this. Anchor. Now we are coming back to anchor. A suitable helper that he did not ask for, but was created directly by God himself. So that the role and the purpose that you are given by God to be a suitable helper to man, you are not given by man so that you can fight it with him over. You are actually given that directly by God. And so the question begs, is this suitable helper so that now we can say that it is the anchor of the family? What does it look like? I think that's, that's where now we need to have a conversation. And so now as we engage a little bit, and from a man's perspective, you know, there's this question... Uh, that is a little bit uh, sensitive. That if, if one parent, if, one, if a father or a mother, husband or wife with children and family na kila kitu na boma, is it, if, if you are given a choice, would you say that, uh, that the family will suffer if the man goes? Or the family will suffer if it is the woman who, who goes first. You know, there is that discussion. Because the question begs, how does a family of father, mother, and children of various ages, how does it look like when that woman, for whatever reason, gets out of that homestead? Because as I was thinking like that, I saw very many examples even with very close family members. A home without a mother, without the woman. How is that, how is that house? You know? And God forbid, because we know a few families, I'm sure all of you guys know, God forbid if it is the mother, the woman of the house who God picks first and then leaves the man with the children. Is that family devastated in a big way? And remember he's the sole breadwinner. But you remove that woman from that homestead. What did we say about the boat without an anchor? Drift. But if we put it on the other side, where even the man is the sole breadwinner, soul, I'm saying that even the, the wife, the, the, the woman of the house, is not even earning. But God forbid, what happens to that family? It survives one way or another. And hence, if you really look at it now, you start now appreciating what is it that he put in you, woman, that makes you the anchor of that family? And so that you start acknowledging, you know, you know if I, let me just, exp, uh, you know, just say something. As I was studying this, eh, I also wanted to study the, the issue of where women are really fighting for equality, quote unquote. Eh? And the truth of the matter is that this is a narrative that has been propagated in the world where many women think that being feminine is actually being weak. 
which for me is a serious misunderstanding of what God designed in a woman when he created you. So that in essence, fighting for equality is women trying to take up the aspects of men and losing their femininity, which is God-given, which should be embraced. And actually the fighting, in fact, this was being written, written by a lady, a pastor in a, a book I was reading. And the issue is the fight should be that feminine is God-given and it is not inferior to being masculine. But many ladies are fighting to be masculine, forgetting that being feminine, a woman, as it was created, was actually, is actually God-created and God-ordained. And it is not inferior. And being masculine, by the way, for your information, being masculine is not superior by any chance. In fact, I dare say, when they are saying that um, the, the women are the weaker sex, I beg to differ, big way. I think the men are the weaker sex by far. There are two, there are two types of powers. There's a power of position where you say, I'm the manager. I'm the one who is wearing trousers. I'm the one who brings food in this house. And then there is the other source of power, which is, which is bigger by far, which is called the power of influence. And where the real leader is not the one who makes the most noise. That's the real leader. And so I, I wanted us to look at it and just have a conversation. How? Now this is the point where I want us to have a conversation, and then I end it with a few scriptures, and then we open it up for questions. How are you an anchor in the family? Why is it that that house becomes a home when you come in there? And why is it that when you get out, then that home starts drifting pole pole? And this is how I wanted us to do it. I wanted us to look at the, at the characteristics of a godly woman or the role of a woman in the house, in the home. And I started just listing them down from a man's perspective. And I think I've reached something like 13. And I also want to get a little bit from you guys. Number one, let me just start you off and then we can start now having a conversation. Number one, the woman, like now, for example, I'm speaking about Jane in my life, is a natural. 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 You know? So that at the end of the day, the woman is an enhancer of whatever he finds. He will come and he will find a house. I don't know whether you guys, when you, when you, you know, for me, we got married and we moved into our first small house together. So I've never been in a house on my own. But I think that cannot be said by, by most of you guys. When you guys were getting married, what was the state of the house of that Jama? What, I think we are few enough. I think you can speak up and uh, let's have a conversation. What was the state, for example? Viombo ilikuwa joko jikoni? How many sufurias did he have? Two. Hata huyo alijaribu. Sahani ngapi? Akukua na sahani. Alikuwa nakulia kwa hiyo sufuria. Anakula kwa hoteli. Right? How many clothes did he, did he have? For, for example, eh, eh, up, I can see we are, we are all grown-ups. How many underwears did you have? When you met? Seriously? Right? What was, what was the state of, of, of the house? How many beddings, bed sheets, for example? Blanketi? So... Let's go back to Mesema in the beginning. So what did you guys do? You got married, a few of us, uh, myself included, because uh, we, we, were not, we did not have the opportunity to do things very right. Eh? We were very young, so even the society opposed us getting married. So I took Kanisani. I'm sure I'm not alone. So Tulianza Kwanza, Lesa Tukaenda Kanisani. So what did you guys do? What did you do? Umepata huu jamaa, safu, sahani, safuria moja, hata ijawashua, ija nini, e, e, like that, like that. What did you guys do immediately? Oh, 
organizing. You know? So you guys come, you organize, munapanga, and then eventually, uyo mutu sasa, in fact, hata kwa kilugetu, unasikiega mutu wakisema, because now they got, eh, he now has a steady girlfriend, or a fiancé for that matter, anasema, sasa nimepata muji. Niko na muji. Right? So it is, you, you come and you get that guy with a house that is completely disorganized, with a can income that is completely disorganized, not planned for, and what you do immediately is that you take what he has and you enhance it. You nurture it. And whatever is nurtured actually grows. And, and without which, that boat is a boat without anchor. It drifts. So, after that, also, mempanga, unamwambia, kale kashati, you know, I sometimes start looking for a shirt that I really like, lakini ilikuwa na shimo hapa, siju hapa, hapa. I look for it, siyoni. Ile tupwa. It was, uh, you know, retired. So, so, you ladies look at it and you start thinking, apana, isi mzuri, can we get this one? You take the shopping money that you are given, you scale it, and you are able to get a new shirt for him, atabila kumuliza, na nina nini, na unampanga. Right? So, that is what happens to a man, for example, that is what happened to me. Bila mimi nilikuwa tuna kakitana moja, and everything else ilikuwa na fit kwa katasika mwenyore katen bob. That was discontinued recently. That was my life. But after that, unapata safuria moja imeongezwa leo, kesho sahani tatu, like that, like that. And then, my life and my position at that point is enhanced. And then now it is a continuous process up to the time that God allows you to be together. The other one is what uh, Mamalis has just said, that now, say for example now, you, you guys have now gotten married, you now have the home, is the organization bit of it, and the planning bit of it. And I want you, my intention is that at the end of the day, I want you guys to appreciate yourself more, and so that you don't want to fight to be a man, be comfortable being a woman, because you understand why, what is your role. The organizing bit of it and the planning bit of it. Honestly, for men, we do not have the patience, we do not have the know how to be able to plan everything, to be able to connect everything with everything. We absolutely do not have. Without you guys, we are completely unable to do it. For us, it is one thing, and you do it to the extreme at the expense of all the other things. And every time I, I, I come to Jane and I say, ah, Pastor Fanya, and then she just keeps quiet and says, have you thought about this? And oh my God, I had not even thought about it. And what about these guys? When they come, what will they, where will they sleep? What will happen? And all those things for me, they had not existed. So the, the ability to organize and plan and the ability to be able to see all the things connected up to the end, how will those guys come? What will happen? Supposing this person does not do this, what do we need to add here? Like that, like that, like that. Then that, remember, God said, let's make a helper that is suitable for him. Basically, I think what God looked at, he says, I think he looked at it and he said, by the way, this man has a weakness here, 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 and here. And I want to create him a helper who will be able to complement all his weaknesses. So that at the end of the day, it's complementing, never competing. It is never competing. There are things that men will be able to do, and there are things that women will be able to do. But majority of the things, especially around the home, is basically God ensuring that you guys came so that nothing goes wrong. Then the other one, as I'm thinking, I'm, I'm just listing mine without any, any order, of, any order of, of anything. Then after that, we can hear a little bit because I want you now to start thinking about it. There is something that... Uh, what happened to the mic? Reduce, Kidogo. There is something that, um, that, that we say in our mother tongue uh, that, uh, that, uh, that... You know, uh, what, what the wife says... What the wife says, the men will just say... Ah, and then tomorrow, you will eat humble pie and you say, by the way, na udiniambia, na hiyo kitu imefanyika. 
So I don't know, I, don't, I was thinking in Kikuyu, and I was unable to put it in writing here. So I just, I just called it a sixth sensor. Are you guys understanding what I'm saying? When, when I want to probably maybe purchase anything, uh, maybe I'm buying a piece of land or whatever it is, I have learned 24 years, uh, like what our speaker said, you learn, it's a school, eh? So you learn a lot of things. That is not how I was, just in case you start admiring me wrongly. Eh? I, I have learned the hard way. Now I have learned uh, with time that if you tell me there is a good deal, Upper Wai, Kuna Shamba, Inauzua, 200,000, Kimbia, I will not touch it until I go to jail and I tell her, please come and I will come and I will introduce her to you who is telling me there's a very good deal. And I don't know what God put in you, suitable helpers. You have an antenna, an antenna, area that uh, men, yo kitu tulipata kwa store ilikuwe meisha tukiumbwa. We don't have it. We miss it. And Jane will just listen to you. I don't know whether she will smell you. I don't know what you guys do, but ataniambia, yo yiko sao. And I buy. I've made several mistakes when I did not think that uh, it was necessary for her to come. But right now, she will be able to say, Ataniambia to, uh-uh. There's something that is off. Unamwambia, we are saving 300,000. Anakwambia atakama. Yo kitu. Wachana tunayo. And believe you me, like what Kikuyu say, a few days, a few months, a few moments later, you will, ata yeye yaku anajua, but you will realize that had you done it, because as a man alone, I will do it. Because for us, it's logic. Land here is 500,000. And this, I'm getting a deal, it's, they're selling for 300,000. It's 200,000 saving, do it. But for ladies, atasikiza hivi, do you guys hear something? Kuna kitu nyiwa mnasikia? How can you explain that? What is that sixth sense that uh, men don't have, don't understand at all? What, what, what do you guys hear? Una sense? So inakuja kama ka SMS hivi ama... Eh? Special. Communication with the Holy Spirit. So for me, that one for me is a very serious anchor. And I know you guys have several men in your lives. Brothers, Baba, or whatever it is that ignore that in, their, in, their, in the women that God has, has given them in their lives, they ignore that, but most, most often it is to their peril. They really suffer because of that. If you ignore, if you don't use that ability of the woman that God has given you, then as a man, you really suffer. And for me, that one in my life so far, for the past, let's say, Kitukama 10 years, it's, for me, I depend on it. It's critical. It doesn't matter whether I'm even out of this country. I will call her, and I will tell her, by the way, this is happening. Anasema, swalimbili tatu. Then anaskiza, then anaskiza hiyo kitu yu, anasema special communication. Then, sijui kama ni tie green na wakaga, anambia, go. Kama ni areda, anasema, wacha. And I have, I have learned to trust it. Because... Because it, it, is, it is given by God for me to be able to guide the family well. I don't know whether that makes sense. And you guys have it. And sometimes you don't play it. Sometimes you don't recognize it. And it is there. Yeah? And then there is also another thing. Which is for me an arbitrator. And I can, I dare say, also like a peacemaker. Because this is how God has created us. And uh, he created, male and female, he created them. We, we appreciate that he created us differently. For men, it is black and white. There's nothing in between. Especially for us now, uh, when we are starting to have grown-up children, uh, when they are starting now to become unique people, for men, we struggle with the fact that your children will reach a place where you say, I want you guys to go to Nakuru. And then one guy will say, I don't feel like going to Nakuru. 
for me, I want to go to Roy. For men, we don't understand that. You are standing up to me. You know? What, what do you mean? So for us, it's a confrontation. And after that, for us, it is bang the table. And you say, okay, you know, when we were getting married, if I can just give you a funny one. When you were getting married, um, I was in fourth year, and I'm a Malisa too. And my dad came one time, Nakaskia. I told my mom, of course, I was clever. I told my mom, there's this girl that nini, nini, nini. She did not agree to it, but and my dad was mad like a nonsense. Mad, 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 mad. So he came and he banged the table. And he said, you terminate that relationship? Or when I come in the evening? Nisikupate? Uhame? But you know, sometimes uh, men forget that uh, you are also bringing up a small man eh, who is exactly like you. So I can hear that in my mind, I can say, 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 And he did not talk to me for one year, straight. He could not talk to me. That's how men are. Men are black. That's why men are uh, protectors. We don't negotiate. We just come out. No reasoning. You know, we are warriors. We want to go and fight. You know? But without woman in that situation, that boat will drift seriously. Because even now with my young adult son and teenage daughter, I am still that man that was created by God. So sometimes nakujaga, boo, heavy, black and white. Nani mesema? Mungu naya katupatia kisauti. But my wife, ndiyo sasa a betrayer, peacemaker. Anajua kufinya button, I think muna finyaga mali penye hiyo mbavu ilitoka. Anajua kufinya hapo. Na anajua kwenda kutuliza watoto hapa. Even my son now is also becoming a young, a small man. Because ata ye naya uwana. Kasi, you know, if you want to know a man, sasa mekausha kabisa machozi we inatoka. Si kulia watu nalia. Inakuwa katu kuonesha stoki, sibanduki. Nimekuwama hapa. So, I find uh, Jane coming in between the two of us. Anakuja hapa, sasa now, you know, she's stuck between her two men. One older, one smaller. So anakuja hapa, anapunguza hiyo kiigo hapo kidogo, punguza moto, anakuja hapa, anapunguza, punguza hapa. Then slowly, 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 if, if uh, you, you now start understanding that that is her role, eh? before, if you try to come and appease me, hata wewe uko kwa hiyo, shida. Even you, you are a problem, hata wewe toka. And many men who don't realize this, eh? they, they also now also turn to their wives as well. But you ladies have a way of arbitrating, natural arbitrators. You are able to go here, and you are able to soothe here, you are able to soothe here, and you are able to reconcile them. Eventually, it is my mother who reconciled us, by the way. Eventually. And we were able now to talk, and we were able to vent, and eventually when he was born, after that one year, he was born. You know? Sasa wakati adiskia kawashira kamezaliwa, he now came out openly. But it was because of my mother. And now I see that playing out very well in my family with my wife and, and our children. That is a very serious anchor that you guys should embrace. You should not get tired. It's not an easy job to cool down two bulls, ex ex especially. I don't know whether, how many of you guys have grown up uh, young men? Grown up young men with their fathers. You know, those guys who have lifted their hands, I, I just see arbitrators, <laughs> peacemakers. Because these are young men growing up to be their fathers. So some of them are cool, majority of them are not. Now, ukiaza kuambia ni hivi. You know, the biggest dilemma we have is that when you now start having grown-up people, and all along you have been telling them to come to church, and then they reach a place where now it is up to them. The first thing that they do, Kwanza, is to refuse to come to church. I don't know. Yani you in a kwaga too standard. They now don't want to come to church. And you don't want to force them. Because if, if you force them, you have a, a, a crisis in your hands. 
the, the, you know, it's sasa hiyo ni vita umeanza. So you model it, unawaguzisha kidogo kidogo like that. Sometimes you get carried away and you, I will not have people not going to church, ntazima hiyo wifi, and then the wife, sasa, you guys now come and to Lisa, to Lisa, to Lisa. It's a God-given gift. It's a very serious anchor. Don't get tired. Don't get tired. It is something that was given to a peace. And that's why, if you look at the presidents who are very good presidents, it's because they have very good wives. Eventually, a president with a good wife, we now know that uh, we have a good president because by extension, it is the wife also ruling that country. Asubuhi anasema huyu jamaa taniona, anapigia commission of police, shika huyu mtubo ananene, but the wife now, anajua kutuliza, tuliza, tuliza. And then now, that one goes. Which is, which is, uh, which is, Quite, quite, quite something that is, that is a real uh, anchor. The other one that I can put there for me is protector. And I have put in, in brackets, coverer. Remember, he is just for explanation. So anyway, language is what you speak and people understand what you mean. Because I think the most important thing that you guys can do as anchors is to pray, especially for us husbands, is to really pray and cover and cover us, you know? Because without that, I think we, we are completely weak. Completely, completely weak. And I think one of the sweetest things I've had in my life is my wife praying for me. I don't know whether it is as sweet as you guys hearing your husbands praying for you, but uh, even from a marriage context, I usually say don't waste money buying Viagra or any other blue, green, red nini, uh, pills. Don't eat mukombero. Don't, uh, all those rubbish things is overrated and niporojo. You know, just eat well. But I'm telling you, the best way to solve those issues that you know, if you want to know more, you join an MCCG. The best way to solve those issues is hold hands with your husband, with your wife, and pray. And for you guys, because you are here with your husbands, and pray together. And verbally pray for him, and eventually you will see that you will start praying for yourself. I mean, praying for you guys. I think it is the most powerful thing that can happen in marriage. But because you guys pray a little bit more, you realize that men, we pray short prayers, eh? Straight and direct. But, uh, but, but for you ladies, I get amazed at how long Jane pray, prays. Eh? Summarize. <laughs> but that's what you are given. You know? Pray. Pray for your husbands. Pray for your children. Pray for your home. Because I have a feeling that the prayer Honest, fervent prayer of a woman is hard quicker by God. I can't explain that, but I think God really listens to you because he created you to be the suitable helper, and I think part of it is to be able to pray for your husbands, to pray for your children, and especially pray, cover, cover your, your families. I think that one for me is a very big anchor, very big anchor. And sometimes I, 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 I worry silently when I, say, when I see Jane uh, praying a little bit longer prayers. Baka na shanga, kwani ameona nini? Iyo ka kitu yenyu yomu nasema iyo ka Yeah? But, but every time I see her praying, because we have a, a, a prayer place where we pray in our, in our bedroom, even when, uh, you know, you go doing your things there, you know, you know, ninasikia meanza kuomba, I'm still in bed, then I wake up, then I go and pray, and then I finish, she is still praying. So when I go now to look for T.U. Kochini Najwaga, that's covering. Because usually women in the prayer, 100% prayer, I think only 10% is theirs. 90% it's, I know she is praying for us. So you guys, that one is, you are a prayer warrior for your families. Do not be prayer warrior for, for Kenya and the politics of Kenya. 
and the church and everything before you start praying for your own family, your children, your husband, all those guys. That's where it starts. I'm very, very worried that uh, it tells us that we have a lot of work to do. Whoever, wherever we are, it doesn't matter which ministry you are, but I think we have a lot of work to do. If divorce rate is moving from 10% to 17% in Kenya, we are in trouble. We have a lot of work to do. We really need, nobody should think that they are immune. The devil is up and about, like a hungry lion looking for somewhere to devour. I personally think that if you really put it in hierarchy, what the devil hates the most, I think ranking up there, probably the highest, is marriage. Because this is a union that illustrates the love of God for us. And, and he knows and understands that if I fight marriage and I break marriage, I have broken a family, I have broken a society, I have broken a community, I have broken church, it's dead. So that's why he attacks us. And think about it. Think about it, guys. Let me ask you, how long did Adam live before he, his rib was opened and, and his wife was uh, created from the rib? How long do you think he, he, he lived? How long? How long do you think he lived? Eh? One day? Probably not. <laughs> By the time he named all of them, Baka Mosquito, Waka name. Waka Panya, Waka name Zote Izo. Pasi, how long do you think? Because it's not written. Sasa hapa ni revelation to Kivyako. I personally, I agree with Pasi. I probably think eh, it is several light years. I don't think you can even say a thousand years. Me, I think it was a long time. That period, whatever time you think it was, was the devil alive and well? Was he alive and well? So why do you think that the devil only chose to attack when the first marriage was ordained? Actually, I, I submit to you, these are things that I think about when I'm reading the Bible, that the attack on Eve, the attack on the Garden of Eden was actually an attack on marriage. It's a little bit of something to think about because for me, you know, you think about it and you tell the Holy Spirit to help you digest it, but I think it was the attack on marriage. And I think the devil was really did not really see an opportunity to attack until God brought forth Eve. And I think the devil realized that if marriage works, then I'm in trouble. And I need to attack. And what he did in the Garden of Eden, he's still doing it today. Big time. And I personally feel that the devil is more active in church than he's active out there. Because those guys, anyway, I have them anyway. But in church, we are at war. We cannot afford to relax. And I am so privileged to be able to have a chat with you guys so that you can also have a chat with others that are then at the center of that war, at the center of the defense against the war by the enemy is actually you guys here, the women. You are at the center of winning this war. You are at the center of reversing this trend of 17% or whatever it is. In the West, it is now beyond 52%. And you are, you are at the place of fighting. You know, we were having a discussion the other day about fatherlessness and the way the, the boy child now, sasa kona shida mingi na nina 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 nini. But at the end of the day, I ask myself, who brings up these fathers? Who brings up? Who brings them up? Who has the opportunity to inculcate character in these young ones more than you guys? 
How much time do we have as fathers to influence these children? Who influences the children? So all the issues of society, you guys have it in your hands like this. If we have a crisis of boys who are failing to be fathers, then I submit to you that there is something that is happening that is not good with the mothers. It's not the fathers. The fathers play a role, but remember you guys can influence both the fathers and these children. You have that power, God-given. It is you who have that power. Even Jesus broke a covenant when he was not ready to start his ministry because his mother influenced him. Sounds like it's a little bit rude. My time has not come. I think I'm going to say what? Alafu aka 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 mwangale hivi akaenda akaona unajua nani what do you call them the disciples were just close akawaambia hebu fanyeni vile atasema akaenda and i think akiwaambia do what he says alikuwa anasema jesus akisikia unajua there is a way you women communicate without communicating like my mother used to go to the farm and asema nimeenda shamba huyo mtoto muweke kwa jiko mukarange mkatakate mkule Na hiyo ogedheri hata musiweke kuni yungue yote ihishe. Sawa ye, aya, anaenda. Amesema na amesema na luge enye inyo ndio mnelewa. I don't know, maybe the young ones inyo mbukua na hiyo shida yote hiyo. Hata hizo vyombo musioshe, mwachare nazo hapo, zikai hapo. Musiguze, and then akuje jioni apate kuna kitu ikufanya. Hile vita itakua kwa yunyumba. You know? So, I think even, even Jesus was, was influenced by her mother. Ati, ati, ata kumjibu, alimuangalia tuleza fanyeni vile ya mesema. Yani ile design ya, ukose kutengeneza yu waini. <laughs> and this was the son of God. And he had said, Jesus himself had said, my time has not come. Lakini, I think aliwomba tu mungu wakasema, alikambia tu God, God. <laughs> Ni madhi. <laughs> God akawambia, we, ebu fanya yu vile ya kuambia. It was actually, a, in, fact, in fact, the best way to say is, is that he was not supposed to do it, but his mom made him do it. It is the real power. It's called influence. The real power. Forget about position. The real power is influence. And you guys have been given that power to influence the men in your life, including your children, and including your husbands who are there. Remember that this power was given by God. Do not be afraid to use it, but only to radiate God's glory. Now, this is what I, I want us to end it here. And I know you, you have your lists. I know in your notebooks, Mwangeze, your list, because you have many. I have so many here that I have not written. Very, very many here. You know, you know, Nimeandikapo, adapter. There is adapter there. There is prioritizer. There is teacher, you know. For example, adapter. If I can say adapter. If I come in the evening today and I'm the sole breadwinner and I say, I have been fired from my job, my wife immediately presses the button of adaptation and we will adapt. And how we will adapt, it is only through her. She will say, okay, from today onwards, tulikuwa tunakula sausage asubui, hiyo imetoka, tunakula viazi. And adapt. Tulikuwa tunaishi nyumba kubwa, we will, we, iyo, vitu, iyo vita nambiri tupeleke kishagi, tuingie kwa nyumba ndogo. Yani, ata adapt. And the other way around as well. Nimeenda, nimeone kaniwa. Tuliko tunaishi kanyumba ya room moja. For us, we started with a very small one-bedroom house without even chairs, nani, nanini. But every time we move to the next house, she also adapts. We move to the next house, she adapts. Then, kidogidogo, we go back one step, she adapts. Adapter. If you have a close relationship with your wife and you allow her to do what God has allowed her to do, she will adapt for you. That, uh, that family will adapt to any situation. Every time we, were, we, we are building, I tell my wife, Mushipi. In Kikuyu, it sounds very funny. Unajua na mambia, sasa ni time ya, kwe hotora ya, ni ile, unajua sasa ni Mushipi kukaza. Kukaza Mushipi, and she understands what I mean. So immediately, unaona timetable mechenchiwa. Mahali kuluwa kanyama, tunasema sisi ni watu wa, wa A positive, maragwe sasa, na ndengu. Na by the way, tunasurvive. Ukituono uko inje, tuko sawa. 
but we adapt it so that we save as much as possible, and then we move onwards. Adapter and so much more. So this is my challenge for you, because you know yourselves. List that down. What aspects of a suitable helper did God give you directly so that you can be able to anchor that family? List them down and do it unashamedly. Do it without excuse because it is God-given. Now, this is what I, I want us to end with. In um, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1, Every wise woman builds his, her home with her own hands. But a foolish one tears it down with her own words. Ah, sorry, with her own hands. By the way, I was, I've been searching the scriptures, Japata, eh? but I don't think there's, an, there's any other place where God has said, who builds the home? I, I, was, I was checking where God has said that the man is building the home or anything. And I think our Turukana wamesoma Biblia because they are the ones who actually physically build the home. Waze wako huko inje wanalisha punda huko. Mama ndi wako juu huko wanatengeneza nyumba. Literally. Jin, can, uh, can borrow a leaf from the Turukanas? Nika nyundo tu na nini na kasimiti kidogo. But I think in the Bible there is no place where where the building of the home has been given to any other person apart from you guys. And you know, we usually say a good fundi is the one who knows how to kujenga. Na anajua kufanya nini? Kubamua. By the way, kama fundi ajui kubamua yosio fundi. Fake. So, you guys are good fundis to build that home, but you have the ability to build, and you have the ability to destroy and the Bible says it so clearly, so vividly, with your own hands here. It's in your power. It's in your power. So, so that we open up for a few questions and we can engage a little bit. This is what I wanted to say. That my daughter, Vanessa, my relationship with my daughter, I cannot even explain. I am very close to my daughter. She, she, I am her first man, if you can say. I'm very, very close to her, and, and it's a closeness that I cannot explain. And I think God puts it, I don't know whether you guys, I don't know what, your, what, what was your relationship with your fathers, but if you had a healthy relationship, it is usually very close. It's a special relationship. Fathers and daughters. I had the opportunity to, to, to speak during the fathers and daughters that we had recently last year. But it is very close. And I think it is with a purpose. Because you are the daughters of God directly. And maybe you know, maybe you don't know, maybe you don't appreciate it enough. But the relationship that your father has with you, his daughters, is very special. Very special. You are actually the only thing that he went back to the laboratory to create is you guys. So basically is that you are coming to perfect something maybe that he needed a little bit of perfection. And he did it without stress mingi. And you have a very special relationship with your father. And as you do your father's bidding, as you fulfill your father's purpose in this world, in this creation that he made, I want to implore you that we are having this conversation today that cultivate the relationship that you have with your father. Cultivate that relationship. He has a soft spot for you guys. Very soft spot. Cultivate it. Pray fervently, continuously, ceaselessly, Ask on behalf of yourself and on behalf of your family. Ask, realize that the power to save this family is actually in your hands. 
the power to save this family and to save this society by extension is actually in your hands because God has a soft spot for you guys. It's a father's and daughter's relationship. And it is the ultimate father with his daughters. So being an anchor is actually directly related to how much you have connected yourself to the father who truly enables you to have the ability to do all these things and much more, much more, much more. Because you have been created to actually perfect the society that God in intends to have. The power that you have is immense, immense. It's great power. You know, I was reading the, 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 influ the influential women of the Bible. Amazing. Some of them I was listening. I know Jane was also listening with me by extension. But it is amazing. Esther, you know, if we go down the line, you'll be surprised. Study the influential women of the Bible. Study them. Because they have been put there for our benefit. So that we can emulate them and we can learn from them. Study them. Study these women. You will be amazed how many books are there to study them. And for God's sake, being female as God created you is not being weak. Whatever you say you are fighting for equality and you are trying to get it for man is actually wasting your energy. Just be the woman that God created you to be. And the question I was asking the, 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 the speaker in the morning today here, if it is not in the Bible, it is not true. And if it is true, it is in the Bible. How dare you get advised by people who do not even know who created them? Confused people, misguided people, while you have the Bible at your disposal. Please operate according to the instruction manual, the creator's manual, which is the Bible. And with that strength from the Holy Spirit of God himself, then you will do it with understanding. And you will not be affected by fallen, uh, weakened people, especially men, sometimes who are known to have, uh, you know, verbal spots or some funny behaviors, because you say, when you say that, you just tell God, thank you, that you created me to come and help this man. So give me the strength to be able to help this man and to be able to glorify you. And I will want it to end there. I know this is just a beginning of this discussion. Please be, study, study. And even in your groups, Mamalis, in your groups, please discuss how, what it means to be a suitable helper because it is very important. It's an anchor of the society that we are in that really needs you guys. It really, really needs you guys to be able to anchor us to be what God wants us to be. Thank you and God bless you.